my Zane Banks here. And I thought I would do a little bit of a special kind of, I guess it's more of a talk really today, about being a band leader and how to run a band or an ensemble effectively so that you don't end up tearing your hair out or you don't lose the respect of the musicians or you don't frustrate people who are playing with you. And most importantly, how to just make rehearsals and gigs efficient and fun. So it's probably not going to be a lot of guitar playing today, but I'm going to try and share a little bit of the experience and knowledge I've gained over the years from doing plenty of gigs. The first thing to remember, if you're going to be a band leader, you have to know the repertoire better than anybody else in that band. And that means, in some cases, knowing the parts that people have to play as well, if not better, than them. Now, I know if you have a horn section, I don't know a lot about embouchure or fingering, so I can't really compete with a horn player with that intimate knowledge. But I know the harmonies, I know the rhythm, I know the sound, and I've got an ear, I can tell if it's in tune. So you're essentially acting like a conductor. A conductor in an orchestra is, you know, every conductor that I've ever met have been some of the most impressive individuals and also intimidating. Not intentionally intimidating, they're just so knowledgeable about not just the instruments in the orchestra and music theory, but they're very well read. They know what everything means. They, their knowledge of history and art and culture is very impressive. So you don't necessarily have to be like that, but if you were going to play, let's say, for example, a, a Mel Haggard tune, you don't have to do everything as Mel recorded it. You could do your version. But you need to have an idea of what you want in your head. If you're playing with a musician or musicians who are very, very skilled, they will bring with them their own confidence and experience. But if you have to take care of people who are perhaps not at your level or not at that very high professional level, then they do need direction and they do need leadership. And it is kind of similar, I think, to looking at like the army. You're there to have a clear plan of what you want. You should know the tempos. Don't look at the drummer. The drummer is going to be looking to you. You should know the feel that you want. You should be able to communicate to everybody in the band exactly what it is you want them to play. And that takes work you've got to then go and do a little bit of research and some reading so that you can, first of all, articulate what it is that you hear in your head once you've thought about what it is you actually want. And then you learn the terminology to be an effective communicator. So if we were doing, let's say, The Bottle Let Me Down, there's a video of me playing that online, you can check it out. Now, with that video, we did not rehearse it. We were in the studio doing something completely different and we had five minutes left. And Michael Carpenter, who's a producer that I work with, fantastic guy, you should check him out, Love Hurts Studios. He said, hey, look, we've got five minutes left, what do you want to do? And I looked at the guys and I said, this was the band James Ellis and the Jealous Guys. I was there with my brother. I said, do you guys know The Bottle Let Me Down? And they all sort of went like, yeah, like they knew it well enough to, you know, play through it. And I said, you know, about here... So I gave him a tempo indication because I could hear it really clearly in my head where it wanted to be. And I just very briefly said to the different, you know, I said to the bass player, just a two feel, meaning playing on beat one and beat three, two beats per bar, doom, gum. Now he would know that that meant playing on the tonic and then the fifth, and it would be completely acceptable to do a few walking bass lines or passages to connect chords. But if he didn't know that, then I could say, look, it's totally acceptable to do this stuff. The drummer also said that tic-tac feel where you've got brush doing a very dotted uh, shuffle pattern and you're doing cross stick on the snare. Not a problem. And organ player knew to do a syncopated my brother, I didn't have to say anything to him, he knows it. And I also just had to communicate to everybody, it has an intro. The intro is over the five chord, so it's going to be over an A. And with skilled musicians like these guys are, I could just say, you just, you'll hear it. And in a song like this, you can just hear it. I, it comes in when I do my part, is when you get the... That's where it resolves to be. And they could hear that really clearly. So there wasn't a problem. James, who was singing harmonies and playing acoustic guitar, knew the tune, and he knew to take the harmony. So that was a really easy way that we could play through a tune without rehearsing. We never even played it together, let alone rehearse it. And, you know, it sounds pretty good. 
You know, it's probably maybe not the best version anyone's ever heard of it, but certainly not bad. And I'm not taking all the credit for being, you know, a mighty band leader. But when the opportunity was presented to do a tune, I knew a song that I knew well enough to communicate to everybody else what it is that they could do, and we did it. So I think a thing that you should consider, and this is applicable to any genre, it doesn't matter, even if you're doing opera, it's exactly the same. Think about what it is you want to play, how do you want it to sound, if you're going to get kind of deep on an artistic and creative level, what are you trying to say? If you're playing a Mo Haggard song in 2020, what are you trying to say? With this whole COVID-19 situation that's going on, you could be saying a lot. There's a lot of blues going around. Mo understood pain, suffering, hardship. So you could have your take on it. But you've got to think about it. This stuff doesn't just happen. You know, A lot of you know, musicians don't necessarily open up and talk about this stuff, but they think about it. So think about what it is that you want to say, how you're going to say it. What tempo do you really feel The Bottle Let Me Down or any other song really works at? And it's such a personal thing. There's no right or wrong. Yes, we have original recordings to go by. And if you're in a covers band playing for a covers band audience, it's a different situation. But when it comes to like your creative and artistic autonomy, think about what do I want? What instrumentation do you want? What do you want those instruments to play? And then think about what is the best way to describe to those musicians the sound that you want? Now, there are musical terms that really help with this. And that's why I suggest learning a little bit of like working music theory is advisable because it just cuts out a lot of wasting time in the studio. So being able to talk about those particular tones, the particular feels, particular grooves, good musicians will know that stuff. You could even just refer to someone who's well-known that does that. The things like the Picaro groove from the beginning of Toto's Rosanna. You don't have to go, oh, it's like a 12-8 halftime shuffle. You just go, oh, it's Picaro shuffle. And people go, oh, that's cool. And you could say it's a Bernard Purdy shuffle. They know what you're talking about. And drummers will know what you're talking about. Having a knowledge of this stuff. You have to know a bit about drums. You have to know a bit about horns. You have to know a little bit about keys or whatever it is that you're going to work with you need to know a little bit because it's your responsibility as a band leader to keep everybody together so when you listen to anything whether it's on the radio listen to it with quite a critical ear i don't mean do i like it or not but critically in the sense of what is the bass actually doing and if you had to describe to your bass player how to play the bass like the recording given they can't hear the recording how would you do it? Uh, I used to do a lot of this stuff you know, when I was growing up. I would listen to recordings and I would try and really articulate in a very short, coherent sentence what I thought someone was doing so that I could get them to do it. And then the other thing is having that clarity of vision and that authority when you're in a band, a band rehearsal or live gives you respect. And ultimately, respect is one of the most important things when it comes to leading a band. If people don't respect you, it's the same in any leadership position. If you don't have that respect there, then you're not going to be able to get the results you want because people are going to stray and they're going to do their own thing. And in the army, it's terrible. And in a band situation, it's terrible as well. Uh, there's, not, there's no second, third or fourth conductor in an orchestra. There's just one. And when that conductor walks in, if you've ever watched a rehearsal, either live or on TV of an orchestra, there is nothing but respect initially. They just walk in with respect. The orchestra stands up, and then when he tells them or she tells them to sit down, they sit down. And you want to have a little bit of that respect too, and that comes from just the confidence of knowing your own part, whatever the genre is. So hopefully you can think about some of these concepts. You can listen to the music you like. You can then think about what it is that you have for your next gig, whenever that's going to be or next rehearsal. We've got plenty of time now to actually go and do a little bit of preparation for this stuff. And then when you walk in, that clarity, that confidence, and then hopefully that respect that will come with it will just mean that your rehearsals, there'll be no time wasting. There'll be no faffing around. I'm not a big fan of rehearsing. I don't really like it. Jamming is not rehearsing. If I ever have to do a rehearsal, 
I try and make it as quick and as painless as possible. And I will, if I'm playing with musicians who don't know the repertoire that I want to play, let's say if I'm playing non-standard repertoire, it might be an original, then of course I have to know what it is because I wrote the tune, or if it's a cover, I will send out charts beforehand. I might even send out a couple of recordings to give people a general vibe of what it is we're going for. I will maybe write a paragraph in an email to the musicians so that they know I'm not springing on them. Give them a week or so to, to mull it over and think about it. And then when we get into that rehearsal, it's business. You know, I get there, we set up, and we play through it, and I'll just talk to it. If it was a bottle let me down, I would go through that similar process. We're in the key of D. It's going to go to the five chord to start with. Steel's going to do the pickup. Then I'm going to do the second part. When I finish my phrase, it ends on chord one. Bass plays a two feel. Drums does the tic tac Baker's feel. Buck Owens drum feel. Any other instrument organ that can maybe do a syncopated offbeat feel. Then you might communicate. Part of me. Steel does the fills in the verses. Guitar does the fills or fiddle, whatever. Just something that's really clear. People don't want to hear a lecture. They just want to hear in two or three minutes your vision and your path for realizing that vision. So if you've got any questions about this, I'm going to do a few more videos on running a band, singing and playing, music theory, just general things. I haven't done so much stuff in the past when it's been more guitar based, but I want to touch on this stuff because I think it's really important. We're not just guitarists in isolation in our bedrooms. Well, <laughs> we might be at the moment, but once the whole coronavirus thing resolves itself, we will go back to playing in bands with other people. We are at our heart chamber musicians. We are social musicians, guitar players. And we need to know how to, that's pretty cool, we need to know how to interact with other musicians, particularly if the responsibility falls on you to be in charge. So please send me any comments or questions if you want me to cover any particular topics. Thank you for tuning in. You can find me at the Rev Dr. Z on Instagram. Please hit the subscribe button and there's the bell so that you can find out about my latest videos. And Check me out on Facebook. I got a little bit of a forum thing happening there where uh, other like minded guitarists communicate to and talk to each other about gear and techniques and so forth. So we just want to keep everybody together in this community, particularly when there are no geeks going around. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.